You just gotta love how casual Toto is when he says that he has a 500,000 IQ. I mean, to be fair, he does have quite the big brain. I mean, what he was doing throughout this episode with his combo with, you know, Yuji, you know, constantly clapping and maneuvering him in different positions, himself in different positions, to be able to fight the cursed spirit, it makes sense why he would think he would have a big brain. But on top of that, he was able to construct an entire world inside of his head in 0.1 seconds and come to a conclusion on how to kind of ward off those cursed buds that were probably going to embed in his body and wipe him out completely. It's just like, yeah, I think if you were not a Toto fan at this point, this episode's gonna make you a Toto fan. Like, I, I, I will definitely say that I already love Toto, but my love for him has grown to a whole other level thanks to this episode. Just seeing scenes with him clapping, and you see the curse energy just flow out of his hands, and you just see the scene and the beautiful art and animation surrounding it, and then, you know, he moves a character, moves himself, and then he keeps doing it in different poses. Just something about it is just so beautiful, and it really, once again, goes back to the age-old thing I keep saying, is that... The passion that is put into Jujutsu Kaisen is truly something else. I, I know it's something everybody says, but it is something that needs to be praised. The quality of Jujutsu Kaisen, the art, the animation, everything about it, the voice acting, the freelancers working on it when the main staff can't do it, everything about this series just smells of beautiful passion. So much love and effort really put into this. It's like a project for truly the fans of Jujutsu Kaisen to make this series the best it possibly can be. And just like how I said, episode 19, last week's episode was like reminiscent of Demon Slayer's episode 19. Episode 20 this week of Jujutsu Kaisen, I think, takes it to a whole other level. There was honestly no scene I could find that truly was not beautiful art-wise and animation-wise. There is non-stop beauty throughout this episode to, once again, the Toto scenes with him clapping his hands and seeing the curse energy coming out of it, just the little frames in between, to Yuji, the punching scenes, the fluid animation, the punches coming in and slamming into the cursed spirit, to Gojo, you know, showcasing his eyes and floating above the entirety of the forest, to him using using red and blue to create purple to the guy wanting a coat. There is just non-stop beauty throughout this episode, and I just, I think everybody can see it at this point, and I feel like this episode takes already something that was already beautiful from the previous episode and enhance it to a whole other level, something that honestly, I don't even know what to say anymore. I, I lack the words to describe just how good this episode is. That That's really all I can actually say at this point. So, I'm just gonna say... Jujutsu Kaisen, I, I'm not going to be surprised if the cells of this series could actually beat Demon Slayer this upcoming year. Like, this year, I, I would not be surprised if it beats Demon Slayer. Like, I would not. Or even challenges Demon Slayer for the top spot of volume cells, anime cells, etc. Because that's just how good the this anime has been and these episodes have been. It really just speaks for itself. But um, anyways, I want to get into the meat of this episode and talk about something that really fascinated me. And that was Toto's technique and how it's very reminiscent of Nin from Hunter x Hunter. I think everybody at this point knows how much I love Hunter x Hunter. I, I love Hunter x Hunter. It's easily one of my favorite series of all time and my favorite power system in any show or anime, manga, or whatever I've ever seen. I love the power system of Hunter x Hunter. Nin is just such an interesting concept in the way it's able to be so flexible for any opponent. I love the Nin power system. And when I look at this episode of Jujutsu Kaisen, it once again reminds me of Hunter x Hunter. The power system in general once again goes to show how much ingrained it is with kind of like nods towards, you know, Hunter x Hunter and how the, the offer of this series really does love Hunter x Hunter and Togashi's work because of just how the power was used from Toto within this episode. So let me kind of explain. Most shonen, not all, but most shonen have a major flaw, and that is 
you have characters explaining their moves and their weaknesses to their opponent. And usually the reason why this is done is for the audience, the readers and the watchers can understand how the power works. But oftentimes, because of how they explain, they're also explaining it to their opponent, which in the end result kind of makes them lose the fight or puts them in a difficult situation to where they might not come out on top. It creates tension, but in my opinion, it's kind of false tension because it's like, why would you tell them something just to make yourself at a more disadvantage when you didn't need to and you would have the upper hand to begin with. However, Jujutsu Kaisen kind of turns this formula on its head. Kind of talking about the technique to your opponent actually strengthens the technique. For instance, the Cursed Spirit explained how its technique worked in the previous episode, and it will have more of an effect. And we have in this episode, Toto tries to explain his technique to the Cursed Spirit to kind of give it a little bit more of an amplified effect. However, here's the thing. Toto didn't fully tell the truth and he did tell some truth, so is half truth, half lie. And I love that about this episode, because one of the big details is, is from what I got, is that Toto didn't get the full power boost of what he would normally get if he was to explain his technique in its entirety. Because we don't really know the ne necessary things of what really happens if you explain the technique. We don't know every little detail it does. We can assume it boosts the power of said technique. Example, let's say Yuji was to explain his technique of his punching, or whatever, maybe it would boost the overall strength level and he would be able to hit a lot harder. However, Toto's technique isn't something as concrete and simple as that, even though he has such a simple technique. Toto's technique is literally just him clapping his hands. So what would really benefit him by explaining his technique in its entirety to his opponent, besides obviously psychologically, which I'll get into in a second? There really doesn't seem to be much that I could really do for him. The only thing that comes to mind would be maybe co cost efficiency. Basically, maybe it's more efficient to tell the opponent because then he wouldn't use as much curse energy. Because when you really look at what Toto was doing, he was spamming his clapping technique quite a bit throughout the episode. Or it might increase its range. Maybe it'll allow him to transfer more objects at once. Who really knows? The point I'm trying to say, though, is, is that we don't really know the full uh, like details on what really happens if you explain the technique, but at the very least we do know that Toto used that to his advantage to fight his opponent within this episode. So let's get into the psychological aspects of it and why it's so important for this fight and why I love this episode. I think it's the best episode of Jujutsu Kaisen to date. That's how good it is. So the thing is, is Toto, he told the Cursed Spirit like, hey, clapping, I swap with my opponent, I could swap someone else. But he didn't tell everything about it. He didn't say how large his range was. He didn't say exactly the limitations. If he could only switch living objects, could he swap with non-living objects? He never clarified anything about that whatsoever. And because of that, it constantly made it to where the Cursed Spirit was second-guessing itself. Is, you know, Toto going to swap with, you know, them are going to swap in place like the enemy and Toto's going to swap? Is, you know, Toto going to swap with Yuji? Is Yuji going to swap with the enemy? The, the Cursed Spirit never had any idea of of when you know, he was going to be swapped. And so he didn't really know how to, like, you know, anticipate a punch coming at him. For instance, normally he might be blocking to guard his face, but if he swaps with, you know, Yuji, maybe a punch is going to hit his gut. And so he doesn't really know how to defend against opponents that are of different weight classes and different builds because it's really hard to defend in different areas depending on their size and their overall fighting style. It's something that would really mess with your brain overall. And that's indeed what happened in this episode. You had it to where he he was slowly picking up on how to fight, but even then, it was still incredibly difficult because of a lot of the little lies that Toto threw in with his technique. Example, the first one was that Toto explained that just because he claps doesn't mean he needs to activate his technique. That's a big detail, because this goes into a whole other layer of psychological warfare against his opponent, because, number one, he, the opponent's like, oh, so if you clap your hands, that means something's gonna happen, someone's gonna swap. But as soon as Toto did that, and nobody he swapped and messed with the whole psyche of his opponent because now the opponent needs to wonder when Toto will actually activate his technique and when he will not. So he's constantly having to pay attention to the sound, the sight, and everything of his opponent even if the clap happens doesn't necessarily mean that he's actually going to swap something. So it's a whole other layer and I love that fighting style and it just goes to show you because of how simplistic Toto's technique is, it makes him even more dangerous because you're constantly thinking about different 
different ways it can be applied and used, and that's what truly makes it horrifying to fight against. So I, I love this episode. I love how this fight was demonstrated because it shows the peak and quality of what Jujutsu Kaisen has to offer going forward in the future with a lot of these fights and different techniques, etc. Now, speaking of techniques, I do want to talk about Yuji since, you know, I'm talking about Toto already and, you know, the bromance between these two characters are really at a whole other level. Yuji used Black Flash once again within this episode multiple times, and it was explained by Nanami himself with a brief little, like, intermission scene showcasing what Black Flash really actually represents. We know what power Spike gives, etc., but the point is Black Flash more along the lines of what it does is it puts the user in a zone-like state. And it's something that I think everybody most likely has experienced maybe one point in their life, especially I know I have playing games. Like when I've played a ranked match or something in a game, I feel like I get in the zone and I just lose focus of everything around me and I just focus on that one event and I'm able to do something I normally wouldn't do. And you're like, man, did I really just do that? That's incredible. And the same can be said for sports players. There's a lot of sports players that get in the zone and they're able to do some incredible feats that they normally would not be able to do, but they're in such a zone that they have this rhythm going on and they're able to do incredible things. And that's kind of what happened with Yuji, is that because of Toto's technique and how Yuji was able to flow from one punch to the next, it allowed Yuji not to really have to think too hard about it. He was just going with the flow, going with the fight, and which resulted in staying in that zone-like state, being able to use black flash over and over again. He wasn't stressing out, he wasn't worrying, he was just focusing on his fight alone, and I appreciate that little detail. That really gives a lot of context to what was happening throughout this episode, and what Yuji was doing, and why he was doing so well against his opponent. Now, speaking of which, I do want to talk about Gojo now. So, Gojo, he demonstrated something that I think is going to just be like, holy crap, the man's just unreal. Like, it really goes to show how high quality his strength is. Like, he is on a whole other level. He is nowhere near anyone else. Like, he is truly the strongest person in the series so far, besides probably Sukuna himself at full power. And just seeing Gojo use, like, the red and blue moon, merging it to create this blue energy blast that went through the entire forest and hit the cursed spirit, shows the level of his strength. And even Speed Blitz and the guy that was like, hey, I want to create you into a, you know, turn you into a coat rack, and Gojo just destroys him instantly, it just shows his level of power. He's really scary. Like, when he really takes off the blindfold, he shows his eyes, He's fighting. He's not someone you want to mess with. And it really goes to show you the guy, the curse user that tried to fight him in this episode, really did not have a good brain or head on his shoulders to be able to think that he was able to fight someone like that. I mean, it shows that the curse spirit was definitely a lot more intelligent by even admitting, like, look, I am not naive enough to fight Gojo. I'm getting the, the hell out of here. I'm not staying here because that man is ridiculous. And, you know, the curse spirit tried to leave. So just Gojo, ridiculous, a powerhouse, and it shows kind of what we can expect from the future, maybe what Yuji one day will be capable of. But for now, though, Gojo is just someone that is unreal. Like, he destroyed the Vel, he speed blitzed everyone in different areas. He's just, it's insane how strong he really is. But okay, anyways, enough with that. The point, though, is, is that this episode of Jujutsu Kaisen is non-stop high quality. And I think at this point, anyone that says that Jujutsu Kaisen isn't good, I think are just wanting to hate it for the sake of hating it. Because this is really a high-quality series. The art, the animation, the story, the characters, the voice acting, everything about it is truly good. It has everything that really makes a quality series. It's got enough action, enough character development, characterization, it has beautiful art animation, it has voice acting that's just unreal that really elevates certain scenes even with the beautiful OST. There's so much to really love about this series and just this episode is more proof of that. But uh, yeah, just Jujutsu Kaisen. I definitely could see maybe in the upcoming year it might beat Demon Slayer and Cells. We'll see. But I'm really, really b uh, under the belief that it's going to do so. But I want to leave it at that. Let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoy my content, you know, please subscribe. If you like this video, please leave a like. And if you want to get notified for whenever, you know, I upload a video, please click that bell icon down below. It does help me out a lot. It helps out with the algorithm because it really helps you guys to be able to see the videos when I do upload them. But anyways, guys, be safe, stay healthy, chibi out.